Hi there and welcome back to Station Road. Now today is part two of the viaduct scene makeover. So uh, if you had watched the part one, uh, which is a link in the top corner for that, this is a continuation of that, uh, where we now get on to some foliage and uh, some different ways of uh, tackling that. Uh, some found materials and bought products and we will see how it goes. So uh, I guess without further ado, let's just crack into it. Right, so we're going to begin doing a little bit of layering just in this sort of area here and we're going to use the short dead grass fibre for just sort of certain areas and to try and sort of dull this down a bit and of course we're going to use the um, spray adhesive uh, which we had uh, in use in the experimental video. So I've just masked off areas where I trying to avoid spray going too far. Um, I've probably gone a little bit overboard here because I can probably control where the spray goes reasonably well. So uh, we'll uh, crack into this and see how it goes. Right, well, um, I don't know how successful um, this actually turns out to be because it's not so much the actual the glue itself, it's the nozzle. It just splatters and spits and starts, so it's, um, it doesn't come out nice and evenly. It's, um, it's the, uh, the, oh, clearly the nozzle is, is pretty useless, um, which is actually kind of annoying, really. The other option that I had and it was a, it was only actually a backup op option um, because I wasn't too sure whether it would work or not and I still don't know whether it's going to work so um, once again this is kind of like um, glue experiment 3.0 now you're wondering what what have I got in here so what I've actually got in here is this <laughs> which is um, it's just a like it's chalked uh, matte clear um, which which I actually use uh, for going over model kits and things like that because it does do actually a complete almost a completely matte finish and it, it's it's quite runny um, but initially it's got a white uh, opaque uh, finish to it and basically I just tip this neat into the spray bottle and uh, with a few drops of dishwashing liquid uh, to sort of help it flow a bit better and we'll see what that does. If this stuff works uh, for, for layering static grass then yeah I'll, I'll go with this. And um, it's pity about the water-based spray adhesive because that actually does work really well it's just the the spray nozzle is um, it keeps clogging up which is uh, more of a design flaw I'd say than anything else unless the only other reason it could be this, I am of course using this in the middle of winter here and it's only just above 15 degrees in, in here at the moment in the garage. So whether this possibly, I am using this 
in a too cooler temperature, hence the clogging, possibly. But um, we'll persevere with this, I think, though, because I'll, I'd really like to get it get it uh, working nicely. But in terms of this, we'll let this all dry, and then, of course, we'll blast this all with a matte uh, fixative or spray. And, you know, I've got loads of different types. There's, there's that matte spray, which is sort of like, kind of like an artist-friendly matte spray. Uh, there is um, fixative, um, artist fixative, um, which I think basically is like the artist version of hairspray. And then we've got a sealer, you know, matte finish um, sealer. So there's, you know, so many different types you can use. And um, we'll just blast all that, fix everything into place. So, um, yeah, uh, that's where we'll leave it for now. Right, okay, so uh, you've just seen the matte uh, spray fixative applied over the top and that was after all the glue had dried and then I just whizzed over it with a vacuum just to suck up any loose uh, static grass. But yeah, I mean, I'm reasonably happy with that uh, result. Um, in terms of the static grass. The next step now is uh, to apply um, bramble, foliage, bushes, all of that kind of material. And so that will be the next step. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's starting to take shape. And I would have to say, just sort of recapping on the spray glue, that uh, matte clear paint that I use, this material here, in a spray bottle, actually worked out quite well. So a few drops of dishwashing liquid in there with it, and uh, yeah, that has actually kind of worked better actually than the water-based spray adhesive so uh, there you go
All right, okay, so now we have a little bit of foliage going on, and I've basically concentrated on the area where the actual viaduct is uh, situated. So once I've sorted out the uh, pipeline and set that in place, uh, I'll put the viaduct back in, and then we can continue on with the rest of the foliage and also adding in some trees and so forth. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that uh, so far. I did want it to be very overgrown and very unkept. Uh, basically this sort of implying it is BR land and um, they haven't really bothered to keep it in check. Right, okay, so we've now leapt ahead uh, a reasonable amount. Uh, I didn't feel that we needed to video putting the viaduct back in and so forth. Um, so yeah, uh, as you can see the viaduct is back in place and I have continued with a little bit more foliage and trees and so forth. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy really with the overall outcome of this particular area and the great thing is I can now lay the track back down and even begin doing some ballasting. So we now have some trees in place, uh, which uh, these were pre-made trees, I think I bought them second hand. And we've just got some kind of uh, bramble type foliage. And if we come down here, we've got, once again, we've got um, quite sort of overgrown. And there's more rambling bushes and creeper up that side and here's the pipeline fixed into place and I've added in a um, lattice girder underneath the road section of the pipeline um, just because I sort of kind of felt that in real life the you might not have just seen a pipe running across there, it might have had some kind of support. Um, it's not based on anything in, in real life, but just for sort of a slightly more convincing pipeline, we've added in the uh, girder underneath. So I am, you know, quite happy with the result. And uh, once this is all dry, uh, I'll then relay the track and uh, I could probably say that this is the scenic area is mostly 99% complete. Right, so there we go. Uh, one viaduct scene more or less completed. Now you're probably all wondering what are all the materials uh, that I actually used during the modelling process. And this is pretty much what I use. Now, um, this is the uh, foliage materials, um, the static grass, we all know pretty much what that looks like. But yeah, there are some rather kind of unique materials in here. Uh, first one here, a selection of fixatives and glues. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, I actually found this uh, matte clear to be quite a versatile liquid for uh, spraying on and even actually squirting on with a pipette to soak in through uh, some of the foliage so um, and just using it straight out of the tin um, worked quite well. Uh, we've got our uh, matte spray fixative uh, here as well, 
uh, we had of course the spray glue and this spray glue although it was no good for the uh, static grass it works really well for um, applying foliage and so forth on top um, as long as you're quick you sort of spray it and then you've got to have the stuff ready to stick on almost straight away then we've got our PVA glue uh, now down here this in this wee container and you probably saw under the trees and in some other areas uh, what sort of looked like kind of dead foliage and so forth uh, now this is just leaves from the garden that I've uh, dried out in the oven and then uh, put it into a coffee grinder and ground it up so you know it makes for quite good uh, dead foliage uh, for that in here a um, big container full of dirt uh, once again this is actually quite good for dulling down areas and uh, so forth and then spraying over the top uh, I also did sort of like the cutting or cliff faces around where the uh, the little walkway is as well so uh, that's what I use for that and that's just out of the garden um, and of course obviously uh, put for a sieve um, and then this one here is um, it's, it's got all sorts of different names uh, dyed roving um, uh, felting wool um, it, it's um, yeah it's got all sorts of names I know that um, I think that you can buy it at the model shop um, I think possibly even Woodland Scenics do it but I just buy this from a local craft shop um, and which I think it works out a bit cheaper and it's just it's just a um, you know a felted kind of wool um, that you can pull apart and um, you know form into any shape um, and it makes for a great base uh, from which you can um, apply scatter, different coloured scatters and so forth over the top um, and then yeah, um, fix it all down with one of the spray fixatives and it, it works out really well particularly for overgrown sort of um, bramble bushes and things like that that's uh, where it comes in and the great thing is this stuff here um, it, you can buy it in different colours, this is sort of a dark brown um, I did use a bit of a, an olive green coloured one as well, that's in there as well. So um, yeah, and it's, it's cheap as anything, this will last me for, for ages, this stuff, and I think that, that one of these was $5, so you know, it's, um, it's quite quite good. Uh, in here we've got, got various different scatters, so that's the scatter that I used on top of the, uh, the, the felting. So that's just a knock um, scatter grass forest floor. Uh, we then have um, foliage clumps which will be a Woodland Scenics product possibly uh, in there. I'm not sure what uh, brand that is. Uh, and then we've got Woodland Scenics. There is uh, coarse turf in various different shades. And yeah, that's uh, basically uh, everything that's sort of used for that uh, foliage side of things. So uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, I certainly hope you all enjoyed the part two of the viaduct scene makeover and I hope you all um, stay safe and well and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time bye for now